Creators Child founders ask a very significant question. Do different statues of God have the same aura effect? Hello. Today Celia and I, the co-founders of Devadara Healing and Creators Child Spiritual Initiative, would like to explore a question that has puzzled us for a long time. And I'm sure it would have puzzled many of you. And that is, very often the same God may have very different statues dedicated to him. He may have very different names very different mantras, very different yantras, very different rituals addressed to him. So do these make a difference? Well, we were browsing and we came across a fairly dramatic divine form, an ancient Egyptian god called Bes. This god was once very popular in Egypt, principally among women, but also did a range of different functions. Now, we looked at three different statues and they were so dramatically different that we were surprised. So we asked ourselves, do these three different statues lead to the same God or, same, or do they have the same aura effect on humans? Let us look at the three statues again. Now, this God is principally called by women for fertility and childbirth issues. So what we decided to do was to look at the aura of a woman asking for a child and see if it had the same effect. We approached Bess through statue one and the effect is quite dramatic. A blue spiral rises up from the root chakra up to the bindu in the crown. This indicates that the divine being is creating a pattern where a child is being implanted and an entire way of life is being created around it. Now approach Bess through statue 2. Once again, praying to Bess in this form creates a root chakra impact. But this time the color is red, clearly amplifying desire. And then it makes a wavy move up to the heart. It is consulting the family's need for a child, the tribe's need for a child. The effect is similar, but the colors are very different. The aura colors are very different. Now approach Bess again through statue three, again as a woman seeking a child. This statue there is a big difference for the beginning point is at the back of the heart as if it is amplifying the emotion, sense of family, sense of happiness and joy and then triggering off a kind of a flirtatiousness that will perhaps lead to a child. Now we saw three different statues of a god being approached for the same need and each of them had a different aura effect. The first two were much closer but the third was remarkably different and so that leads us to the conclusion that when we have many statues, many names, many yantras, many rituals for God 
we call on different aspects of God. So the form of God that you call on is significant too, for it can greatly impact what you get out of this encounter. Now in this case we were very clear that we would approach the same God. We made friends with him and so we were addressing him again and again and ensuring that in every form of worship that we did, it would ultimately reach him. But in some cases, different statues may lead to different gods too. Now some here may say, but we don't worship statues at all. But yes, you call God by a name, by a mantra, by a yantra, by a ritual or a prayer. And each of those may have a significant effect. Now this throws up innumerable questions, but principally one. And so you may ask, but how do I know if the statue, the name, the ritual that I'm using is right for me? Well, we have a very simple ritual that can help with this. When you're looking at the statue, or the hymn, or the prayer, close your right eye and look at the statue intuitively. If the statue, ritual or hymn seems to glow with light, it's good for you. If it seems to shrink or disintegrate, it may not be right for you at this particular point in time. A most useful pointer. If you found this video enriching, subscribe to our channel, share the video and visit creatorschild.com. But most importantly, grow with God.